me tell you some things that I'm fed up with. I don't have time to write a book. I'm campaigning for office, and I won't have time when I'm in, in that session of the legislature because we're going to get squeezed some value out of our tax dollars. That's what I did when I was mayor. I cut property tax rates five years in a row. We lowered the crime rates to the lowest level in decades, tripled the number of community health clinics, took on the polluters, and brought down the level of pollution. We did all that. It takes hard work to run government right. This is what I'm fed up with. I'm fed up with Texas having the highest homeowners insurance rates in the nation. Are you fed up with that? I'm fed up with a guy who put in a utility deregulation scheme where Texas used to have utility rates that are lower than the national average. Now we're higher than the national average. They told us it would lower their utility bills. Anybody here seen their utility bill go down the last 10 years? I'm fed up with high utility bills. Put in by these people in office. I'm fed up by somebody who claims to be a leader, tells state employees to suck it up and tighten their belts, but then at the top lives in a house that he's paying nine or ten thousand for, plus the utility bills, plus all these amenities you read about out of the taxpayer dollar. I've run businesses. I know leadership starts at the top. If you're a principal or if you're a minister, if you are somebody who's running a small business or a large business, if you're a colonel on active duty or somebody's a civic club leader, the leadership starts with an example at the top. Andrea and I are going to move into a double wide trailer if I'm elected and send the signal that these are tax dollars. I'm fed up that the governor doesn't have the guts and political will to take the State Board of Education out of the business of political indoctrination. I'm fed up. And then, I'm also thinking about writing a, I guess you'd call it sequel to Governor Perry's book. When I heard that he has one and a half chefs on the payroll, <laughs> did you know this? That you are paying for one and a half chefs, and you're paying for a subscription to Food and Wine magazine for his mansion. I'm going to write a sequel called Overfed. <laughs> Ten years as a draw, as a draw, <laughs> and, and uh, as a vector of expense in Texas. It'll be a short book. <laughs> Listen, we have great people in Texas. We have good hearts. Leadership isn't dividing this state into a red team and blue team and playing people off against each other every election. Leadership is finding common ground and getting things done. I may not be the soundbite candidate that Perry is. He's more of a slick, you know, he knows what he, he's real experienced, the politics of fear, tear the opponent down, all that stuff. But if you want somebody to work for you that will bring people together in this state, to make us a leading state, not somebody always jockeying for near the lab from Mississippi, a governor who wants Texas to be the state that leads this nation, not the state that leaves this nation. <laughs> I need your help. Please help me spread the word. Please tell your friends and neighbors that there is a new day for Texas out there. Please tell them that Texas as an alternative for governor, and we need a governor for Texas future. Tell them about what I've told, shared with you today. Put a bumper sticker and yard sign out. If so, we will get to watch Sarah Palin on Fox News in November announce with a look of shock and surprise that Texas has a mainstream governor. Thank you. And God bless.